Are you ready to create some awesome cinematic titles? I'm not. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, the guy with the same exact intro in his last 300 videos. Now, in this video, these titles are inspired from one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Arrival. If you haven't seen this movie yet, you should go jump off a bridge. No, I didn't mean to say that. I mean, you should go watch the movie. It's really good. But anyway, I really like the trailer title of this movie. It's very clean. I loved how the dark text stood out against the bright white background. There was some awesome texture in that background as well. But anyway, let's jump on the video and let's create some awesome titles. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and this is the result we're going to go for, but let's go ahead and go into our main tutorial composition, and all we have is a white background and our title. For our title, we're using the typeface Gotham, which, which is a really nice, clean typeface to go with, and we increase the tracking of our typeface here, just to kind of, you know, put some separation between those letters, because we, we want to make this clean. We want to make sure that each letter is legible and we can read it. And for the color, we didn't do a pure black, we made it a very dark gray. And now we're ready to work. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find some sort of clean texture because a white background just isn't great. I just have this up here for reference. So what I have here is a quick little you know, paper grainy background here. I'll link this in the video description so you can download it. So this is a really nice texture when it's nice and small, but if you scale it up, you know, it's just kind of, you see all the bumps. It doesn't look so clean. And if we put it in for a title, I don't really like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale this down and you can see this looks very clean and nice and ready to go. Maybe I'll do it 9%. So I like to bring in the CC repeat title effect, which is underneath the stylized menu, drag it onto our layer, and then I'm going to go to expand right, and I'm going to expand this all the way to the right side of a composition. You might have to hold down shift on your keyboard to rapidly expand this over and then expand the left. And then what we're going to do here is for under tiling, set it from repeat, set it to checker flip H. And this will cover up any creases and you see it's a seamless background. Now what I want to do is reapply that effect. And then I'm going to do expand downwards and we're going to expand it upwards and then change the tiling to checker flip V. And once again, it is completely seamless and this is a nice background, much better than being able to zoom in there and see the entire thing and all the textures and bumps. This is a very nice background. So when we're done, we're going to layer pre-compose and we'll title it background and move all attributes into new composition click ok and you can delete the white background because we don't need it and then from here i like to apply the gaussian blur effect from the blur and sharpen menu to the background and then i like to set the blurriness to about four and click on repeat edge pixels and this will kind of make it not so sharp so now we're going to add some quick fog and we have these fog elements which you can download for free i'll link it in the video description these are from premium beep and these are 4k fog assets and i'm going to apply one of these and I'm going to apply 16 thick cloud to our you know, composition right above the background. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard for scale. And I'm going to bring this down and change the blend mode to screen. If you don't see the blend mode, just toggle switch to the modes until you see them. And as you can see, it adds a nice little bit of you know, smoke and atmosphere to our composition. And remember, you can download this for absolutely free. Links in the video description. So now let's go ahead and blend this all together a little bit better. Let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And for the first effect for the adjustment layer, we're going to add CC vignette to our adjustment layer. And if you want, you can increase the amount, but I think it's fine. We can increase the angle of view to about 70. And that will kind of darken up the edges a little bit and, you know, make things a little bit more focused and, you know, nice and contrasty, if you will. And then I would like to apply curves from the color correction menu to our adjustment layer. And from here, I want to add a little bit of contrast by creating an S curve within the, you know, RGB channel. And this will brighten up the center a little bit. And then, of course, what I suggest doing, bring the top part down so it's not pure white. And let's change the channel to red. And I'll bring this down just by a touch. I'll go to the blue channel and we can bring this up by a little bit. And this will make it a little bit more blue around the edges. And then we'll come back over here and we'll apply the tint effect. And we can lower the amount of tint to about 80 so percent. So, you know, we can kind of keep aspects of that blue in there. We can control that a little bit better. So maybe we'll actually go to 60%. So now we have the basis of a scene, but we still have a little bit more work to do. We need to animate this, and I like to spice this up a little bit more. So let's continue to spice this up a little bit. Let's create a new adjustment layer, and we'll add one of my favorite effects for motion graphics, which is noise from the noise and grain menu, applied to the new adjustment layer, and we'll set the amount of noise to about 5%. And uncheck use color noise. So now I want to add a little bit of animation, a little bit of parallax as well. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer again. 
And this time I want to apply optics compensation, which is a great effect. We'll apply it to the new adjustment layer. And we're gonna use this as an effect. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna increase the field of view up to maybe about 60 or so. Check on reverse lens distortion. And make sure you have to begin the timeline and we'll add a keyframe for field of view. And we might actually increase this a little bit more. And we'll come here to about two seconds or so. And we'll set this down to about 20. And then we'll move to the end of our composition, which I'll say six seconds. And we'll set this down to zero. So this will create a nice opening here. So I like that. And then next, I'd like to create another adjustment layer. And now I'd like to add another great effect, which is the camera lens blur. Apply that to our new adjustment layer. And from here, I'm going to increase the blur radius to probably about 30 or so. And this will actually emulate like an out of focus lens. So this is really a cool blur effect. We'll go ahead and add a keyframe for blur radius at the beginning of our composition. We'll move to about two seconds and we'll set this down to obviously zero. And as you can see, this lens blur is incredibly beautiful. It's awesome. It's cinematic. I hate that word. I can't believe I'm using it anyway. And if you want to do an out transition as well, you can add another you know, keyframe for lens blur and you can move forward and set this back up. You know, this could be your out transition if you want, if you want to start the, if you want to end your composition the way that you started it, you yeah, know, no big deal. So we'll set that back up, add that in there. So let's talk about animating this text just a little bit. You don't have to, what I would do here is go to your, you know, your title layer, open it up, go to animate and we'll add the tracking property and i would add a keyframe for tracking and i would move to the end of your composition and i would just increase this to probably about 20 or so and as you can see if we track this forward it's not coming out from the center it's going from like left to right so what we need to do is we need to add another property here so go click on the animate tab and click on position and add a keyframe for position and move to the end of your timeline and we'll just need to reposition this back in the center of our composition you can bring up your title safes and now you'll have a tracking from the center, no problem. And for our final animation, I'm going to want to add a null object. You can add this from the top. And I want to parent everything to the null object, just like this. So you grab everything, pick with it to the null object. Go to the beginning of your timeline. Okay, ask your keyboard for scale. Add a keyframe. Go to the end of your timeline. And I'm going to scale this forward to maybe about 111%. So now that everything will be coming towards us. And at this moment in time, you should have something very similar to this. And it looks very clean. It looks nice. It looks beautiful. And if you want to see even further, you can add something like a lens flare to this to help, you know, enhance the mood and everything. Um, you know, there's optical flares if you have that or, you know, there's plenty of lens flare packs out there. So I'll go ahead and add some links in the video description if you're interested. But I would also try to recommend keeping that lens flare a part of the same palette. So just adding the tin effect and it's going to be nice and clean. And if you want to have the same exact aspect ratio like this, uh, you're going to want to go to composition settings here at the top and you're going to want to create a 235 to 1 or 2, you know, 39 to 1 or whatever aspect ratio, which is 1920 by 810, which is a 235 to 1 aspect ratio to have this nice you know, and widescreen. So just a cool little tip if you're interested in a widescreen format. If you're looking to create some high-end cinematic titles for your video project right now, go ahead and check our links in the video description. All the previews you're seeing right here are from VideoHive. The links are in the video description. And these are pre-made After Effects templates. So the only thing you have to do is swap out the text, bring in your logo, and you're ready to go. You can render it all out within just a few minutes so you don't have to recreate everything from scratch. So go ahead and check our links in the video description if any of these previews see you or if you're looking for some inspiration. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on this channel, Sunduck Film. And hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creative. And don't jump off a bridge.